Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub's Digital Fabrication Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the DeWalt tools required for green level certification. This includes the drill, impact driver, random orbital sander, and grinder. The drill is used to make holes and drive screws. It's got a pressure sensitive switch, which is your primary speed control. It's also got three gear ranges that you can switch between. Two is good for most activities. Use one for drilling large holes and driving long screws, and three for drilling small holes. The chuck up front holds the bits. It's a keyless chuck, meaning that you tighten it with your hand. To put a bit in, make sure that the drill is in forward with this slide switch that's just above the trigger. If it's comfortable in your right hand, then it's in forward. With your off hand, hold a bit centered between your thumb and index finger while you grip the knurled part of the chuck and then slowly pull the trigger and the jaws will close around the bit. I always recommend that you use the side handle to gain additional control. Select the appropriate gear on top of the speed switch. One for large holes and long screws, two for regular screws and most holes, and three for drilling small holes in soft materials like wood or plastic. The only bits you can use on metal are these twist bits. Don't use brad point bits, spade bits, Forstner bits in metal. They won't work and they will break or melt. These types of bits are for wood only. To drill in plastic, you can use any bit that we have in the shop, but brad point bits are typically work the best. Put a scrap piece beneath your material to avoid tear out. Secure your piece somehow and gently pull the trigger and push into your material. Keep the bit spinning forward as you pull out. Go straight and go slow until you get comfortable. This is the tool that people break their bits with because they don't go straight. If you're not straight, you have a constantly changing bending stress around the bit as it spins and eventually it will snap off and it can be a pain to remove from your hole. To remove a bit, put the drill in reverse, hold the chuck tight and get ready to catch the bit. If you go too fast here, the bit can go flying and that's bad. One of the most common mistakes I see with newbies is that they don't push hard enough and they pull the trigger too hard, especially when driving screws. Whether you're driving or removing a screw, you must push down really hard to keep this bit seated in the screw head. To drive screws using the torque limiting clutch, turn the clutch selector to the screw symbol and then start off with a low number on the clutch, working your way to higher numbers to get the screw to the depth you want. The clutch will slip once the torque reaches your selected value and the screw won't go any further. This is handy feature when driving many screws into something soft. The hammer function can help drive screws and function like an impact driver or it can be used with masonry bits to speed up drilling. But you'll probably never use this function. If you're uncomfortable at any time with any of this, stop, think, and ask a staff member. You will not look stupid for asking. Well, that's pretty much it for the drill. Now we'll get on to the impact driver. The impact driver does one thing really well. It drives screws. This doesn't have any sort of speed mechanism. It's simply the pressure sensitive trigger, like on the drill. The number one mistake I see here, which is the same with the drill, is people don't push hard enough to keep the bit seated inside the screw head, and they pull the trigger too fast, causing it to instantly cam out, and it just makes a horrible, awful noise. It's like, Vroom! So, when you're new at this, or even if you're old at this, push really hard on the forward stroke and the reverse stroke, and uh, make sure that you pull the trigger very, very gently. This thing has plenty of torque. Once a torque builds to a certain limit, it will start kicking in the impact function, and it'll go pop, 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 pop. It may be a little bit surprising at first, but this helps drive screws, uh, and it does it exceedingly well. This is one of our go-to tools, but it's super simple to use, the only control is your forward and reverse switch, just like on the drill, right here above the trigger. For right-handed people, if it's not digging into your finger, then it's in forward. This has a quick-release chuck. To use it, you simply insert one of these hex shank quick-release bits. We have several different ones. We've got mostly Phillips heads and uh, the Torx heads that we use most commonly. You simply insert the bit, it will click in place, and you're ready to go. To remove the bit, Pull the chuck forward on the knurled portion and the bit will pop out. It is that simple. But remember, on this tool, pull the trigger very gently and push very hard. 
And that's pretty much it for this. The random orbital sanders have a Velcro pad that you simply stick one of our sanding pads here in the bottom drawer of our workbench. You line up the holes, and this allows it to catch most of the sanding dust. If you're new to sandpaper, it's measured in grit. The lower the number, the rougher the grit. You always want to start sanding at a low number and work your way to a high number, typically finishing around a 220 grit. Anyway, these random orbital sanders just have two controls. The on-off switch here is up front. It's a simple rocker switch underneath this little rubber cap. And it's got a rotary speed switch here up on the side. Always start it in one and just kind of see what happens. I pretty much never go all the way up. It goes all the way to four, which four and a half, which is nowhere near 11, but it gets going pretty good. The random orbital sander rotates and it orbits. It's really, really handy because it doesn't leave obvious sanding strokes like you would use if you used a belt sander or just, you know, a block, something like that. Anyway, the only key here is to make sure that when you're using it, keep it flat on your workpiece. Try not to tilt it up like this because it can damage the foam pad that's underneath the sanding paper. Keep it flat, keep your palm on it like so, and just move about your piece. It's really, really simple to use. It's really hard to get hurt with something like this. But that's pretty much all there is to it. The one other thing is it's got this handy little dust collection bag here at the back. It'll eventually get full. To remove it, simply rotate it just a little bit and slide it off, dump it out, and then please stick it back on for the next guy. The last tool for the green level certification is the grinder. This is an awful lot of fun. It sucks the batteries down pretty quick. But the one thing I see people get stumped with is how do you change the grinding wheel? Well, it's really not that difficult. First, remove the battery so it can't accidentally start on you. Right here next to the spindle, there's a little spindle lock. It's a little black square button. Rotate it, push the button, and then rotate the wheel until you can feel it lock in place. Then you'll need to find this tool. It's this funky little wrench with little pins in it. Well, the pins go right here in this nut on the wheel. Give it a quick twist to the left while holding the spindle lock, and this thing will come apart. Now, the one other thing I've seen where people kind of get in trouble here is they don't necessarily put the wheel on in the center. I've seen this thing completely off center and this thing vibrates horribly. I'm surprised the wheel didn't fall apart the time I saw that. The other thing is this little nut here it has an inscription on one side that says this side against quarter inch wheel. Well, we have two different thicknesses of wheels that we typically use, eighth inch and quarter inch. The flapper discs which are these fiberglass discs with a bunch of little sandpaper pieces all around the perimeter. These are an eighth inch thick. These cutoff wheels, which is used for exactly what it sounds like to cut through something, they're also an eighth inch thick. These go on this side that doesn't have the inscription. The grinding wheel, which is a quarter inch thick, you can tell because it's much thicker than the others. This goes on here like so, and if you put it on, with the flat side against this, this nut simply doesn't have enough thread to grip to hold the wheel on tightly. So you have to put this side against a quarter inch wheel. So that goes on like so. Get it finger tight to start, push the spindle lock, give it a quick little twist, and you're ready to go. So that's the, the gotcha on this one, is make sure that you get the nut on the right side and the wheel centered. But this doesn't have a speed control. It's either on or it's off. And if you have a lot of grinding to do, you should probably grab one of the six inch corded grinders. But these are great for their portability, but they do suck the batteries down pretty quickly. Once the battery dies, please put it back on the charger for the next guy. But that's pretty much it. That's the basics for the green level certification tools. They're not that hard. They're an awful lot of fun once you get used to it. But if you're at all uncomfortable, please ask. You will not look stupid for asking us. In fact, we welcome it. You might look stupid if you hurt yourself or break a tool. But if you're at all uncomfortable, stop, think, and please ask. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub's Digital Fabrication Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?